This is Christopher Moldong of Chris's Storytelling Corner. Today I'm going to do a movie review for the Chinese movie Project Gutenberg. Next time I'll have a manga review for Skip Beat Volumes 31 and 32 and an anime review for Shimanetta. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. I'd really like to hear from you guys as well so leave any comments and make sure to subscribe and share this channel as well. So the way that this is going to work is that I'm going to give a detailed recap of the movie. So um, there will have spoilers. And then I'll give my thoughts on the movie. As far as an initial grade, I'll give it a B. And I'll tell you why. So uh, let's recap Project Gutenberg. So counterfeit artist Lee Mann, played by Aaron Kwok, is extra extradited to Hong Kong from a Thailand jail. The Hong Kong police are investigating a series of murders in the counterfeiting world and suspect uh, Painter is the culprit. A mysterious figure who is the alleged head of his own counterfeit operation and one of Lee's known associates. Lee refuses to expose Painter, insisting that his life will be in danger, but Inspector Ho, played by Catherine Chow, uh, counters by claiming to have evidence linking Lee to the mur murders. The proceedings are interrupted by the arrival of noted artist Yuan Man, uh, played by Zhang Jinchu, who attempts to have Lee freed. An agreement is reached where Lee will be released into witness protection in exchange for exposing the identity of Painter and recounting the history of their criminal activity. So they're in the 90s. Uh, so he explains his backstory right now. So here's the story. So during the 90s, Lee and Yuen, Lee and Yuen lived together in Vancouver as lovers and painters, but failed to sell any of their artworks and struggled to make ends meet. They have a reversal of fortune when Lee discovers his passion and talent as an art forger, but Yuan disapproves. Lee finds an agent for Yuan who raves about her work, but Lee's own original artwork is criticized for only imitating the style of the great masters. Lee's work as a forger is noticed by Painter, who's played by Chow Yun Fat, who invites Lee to join his counterfeit banknote operation. Frustrated at his own art's uh, lack of success, Lee agrees to leave Canada with the goal of returning and winning over Yuen. Painter also offers help Lee with his romantic ambitions. Working with Painter's team to overcome the security features of the new 1996 uh, US $100 bill, Lee finds success in his new role, but is reluctant to cooperate with Painter's erratic and sometimes violent methods. With their stock of new bills, Painter's team travel to Thailand to renegotiate their contract with uh, crime boss The General. Painter declines the General's terms and reveals that he has come to Thailand for revenge, knowing that The General was responsible for the death of Painter's father early, years earlier. During the destruction of the compound, which is, just to tell you, it is something you'd see out of the killer or like hard boiled. It is a chow yun fat action sequence to the T, by the way, this destruction of the compound. Uh, Lee rescues uh, Sao Ching, the general's own counterfeit, uh, counterfeit expert. Uh, meanwhile, Yuen has been making a successful career as an artist. When Painter and Lee visit one of her exhibitions, Painter informs Lee he has bought all the art for Lee to, direct her, to decorate his new Thailand mansion and impress Yuen. Uh, confused by Lee's negative reaction, Painter learns that Yuen is already engaged to marry her agent. Uh, Sao Ching joins Painter's team after recovering from her injuries. Painter gives her a fake passport with the name Yuan Man uh, to Lee's amusement. Painter learns that the next buyer for the counterfeit money is an undercover law enforcement agent. In the hotel room where the buyer meets Painter's team, Painter claims to want to exit the counterfeit business and offers to sell the buyer the printing plate. Lee is asked by Painter to retrieve the box containing the plate and offer the plate to the buyer, but the box only contains a handgun. The buyer sees a reflection of the gun while Lee hesitates and Painter is forced to shoot the buyer in the ensuing struggle. Frustrated with Lee's lack of willpower, Painter reveals that Yuen and her agent are bound and blindfolded in the next room. 
Painter insists that if Lee really wants Yuen in his life, then he needs to prove it by killing the agent. Almost everybody is killed in the chaos that follows. Lee, Sao Ching, and Yuen are the only survivors, and the former two flee to Lee's new home. Uh, or Sao Ching and Lee uh, flee to Lee's new home in Thailand. The newspapers report that Painter's body was never found, and Lee is eventually arrest arrested by the Thai police after being found with counterfeit banknotes. In present-day Hong Kong, Lee and Yuan are escorted to a hotel. Inspector Ho notices a man matching Lee's description of Painter who's dressed in uniform and attempting to enter police headquarters. He's ambushed and captured. Confused, the man insists he's a legit police officer and was the driver who brought Lee Man from the airport to police HQ days earlier. It's revealed that while the events of Lee's story are mostly accurate, Lee's description of Painter is fabricated and Lee was Painter all along. The real Yuan man is actually painting in China, while the Yuan man in Hong Kong is actually Sao Ching, who received cosmetic surgery to look like Yuan following the burns he received in the raid on the general's compound. Li Man and Sao Ching killed their guards and escaped Hong Kong by boat. The next day, Sao Ching reveals to Li that she has been deliberately sailing in circles, because uh, they're in a boat right now. Okay. They are supposed to head to the Philippines, and they are still in Hong Kong waters. As the police surround them, she describes how she is tired of living with two identities as an accessory to Lee's deception, and detonates a cachet of explosives on the boat. Later in China, Inspector Ho visits Yuan Man to inform her that Painter has been killed. Yuan is indifferent to the news, saying that Painter's death will not do anything to bring back her fiancé. Asked if she recognizes Lee's photograph, Yuan simply states that the man used to be her neighbor. So the part of Lee's story where he lived together with Yuan was also fabricated, and his obsession with her was no more than the unrequited love of a stranger. You actually find out that, yeah, he was just a neighbor, um, uncle, you know, he, he was already working on counterfeiting way back when, way back then. So, before we get into my thoughts on the movie, I'd like to plug my author's website at www.chrismaldong.com, and you can read a new blog post on there every week. Also, do you like action, adventure, fantasy, crazy characters, different worlds? Then buy my book, The Mustard Prince in the Convent Kingdom, for just $4.99 via ebook on Amazon.com or on my author's website. Links to buy it will be provided on the page description. Please also subscribe to this channel as that would really help me out. So, let's get to my thoughts on the movie. Chow Yun Fat as Painter, or not Painter, the imagination of Painter. His real name is, uh, can't pronounce it, Ning, uh, Ning Fuk Sang. I really like Chow Yun Fat, though, in his role, and, um, in this role here. He is an artist in himself and really appreciated the art of Lee Man in a sense. He, he's seeking perfection. One thing about Chow Yun Fat is he's just such an eccentric guy. You know, at, at one point he can be very violent, at another point he can be really caring and just like, hey, you know, I want you to get back together with the UN. I bought you this, you know. I re like, that's the thing. He can be vanilla. vanilla benevolent, <laughs> excuse me, and um, I really like that the eccentricity of his character throughout the whole movie, he can also fight as well, um, it, it was a bit weird in a sense that he, he kept bringing this guy along, <laughs> Lee Mann, who, who seemed to be, as Painter would say, you know, you know, He's trying to make him the leading man of the story. Lee Mann. Aaron Kwok. You know, very interesting. Uh, how he portrayed his character. You know, before the twist and after the twist. Um, it's like this cowardly guy. 
you know, when in fact he is not that guy. He was the leading character of his story the whole time. Um, and, and that w was really interesting. Um, the stuff that he went through. He had to kill people and whatnot. Um, had to uh, carry the detonation device for a bomb that was planted on Chao Young Fat and whatnot. He just got caught up so much into like Chow Young Fat stuff, and it turns out that he was. I'll get into that though, but you know he he was the painter the whole time. You know we also get to see Yuan Man or Sao Ching, pretty devious woman here. You know you wouldn't have thought. Uh, you know there's a big twist with her, with her being Yuan Man and and whatnot, and then she was just playing the character of Yuan Man and and whatnot. That was pretty crazy. Um and uh yeah, you know, that that really caught everyone by surprise. So here's the thing though. The big talking point now. And I, I watched this with a friend The Twist. Okay. You can look at the usual suspects. You can look at Fight Club. I would say it's a combination of the two. Of what they did here. And I talked to my friend about this. And I asked him a question. Was the twist even necessary for the movie? Honestly. Was it necessary? I think that the movie by itself. Without the twist. Would have been just as fine of a movie. Personally. I thought I kind of thought that the twist was a bit inserted, and then by the time you figure out the twist, and, and they they kept going back and showing how everything was done. They're using so much of the last quarter of the movie to just kind of explain how, how this twist works. The biggest problem is though, like it just keeps making you think, like, okay, well, how does this work with the general? You know, like, how does this work? How does that work? Like, and so, it was a good twist. The problem is, like, I mean, Fight Club had the same twist. You know, Tyler Durden. But, you know, um, Brad Pitt was Tyler Durden. And then he actually didn't know the name of um, Norton. Edward Norton. Uh, he actually never figured out his name um so and by the end you know you find out that Tyler Durden was just someone made up in his head this is not the case here though you know it wasn't like the guy was just mental you know we're seeing like that that was the other thing too we never that's never been established so it's like well what were we watching then you know like there's kind of like this weird, weird thing that's going on of like, is this in his head? Like, does the other guy not exist? Like, how does a lot of this work? I don't really understand. I mean, there's a lot of unanswered questions too. Like, how does the whole thing with the general work then? If it didn't have to do with the father and whatnot, what was it? Why did he... Why did he attack the general and destroy the compound? Like I don't, I don't understand it. If the backstory doesn't exist, like this, uh, it, it a lot of stuff didn't make sense. And the movie was kind of fine by itself. The counterfeiting stuff was cool. They talked about the ink, the paper, drawing, and, and just you know how phone books were made out of like, you know that type of paper and, and making prints you know uh, plates you know and, and whatnot so it, it was interesting all on its own you know and then they kind of hit you with this big twist okay Lee Man was the painter Chayon Fat did not exist or he did exist I, if I'm not mistaken I think it looks to me like Chao Yun Fat may have been the boyfriend or someone that was seeing Yu and Man at the very end, and he just imagined Chao Yun Fat. 
But once again, we never also imagined, is he imagining him? Or, like, what is going on? You know, like, with Tyler Durden, he imagined him. And this, it's just, what are we watching then? Okay? Like, if this isn't imagination, it what is it? You know, it, it, it's just them kind of in, trying to mess with uh, the audience, I suppose. Like I said, was it even necessary to movie what was good without the twist? I mean, you could already... And then they went with the triple th twist at the very end. That, he, you know, Lee Man was not even living with Yuan Mon. He's just some stranger. He's just a neighbor. Was it really necessary? You know, how does how does a lot of this work? You know, it, because then if, if you're going to keep introducing that stuff, it's kind of like, okay, there's the agent, there's the girl, didn't he burn the painting? What was that whole thing about that original painting or that painting with Lee Man then? I don't understand this. If you keep going back, it doesn't actually make a lot of sense. I can't say the same for Fight Club. You know, I can't really see the hole there. Um, but in here, it's like, wait. How did this scene even exist then? How, how did, you know, how did that scene even exist? What, what, how did the general, why was he at odds with Painter then? If that family thing didn't exist. Like what what is going on. You know. And so. The twist makes it actually kind of incomplete. It actually. Just raises new questions without answers. It left some pretty gaping holes here. As far as logic. Um, it was interesting. I'm not going to lie. It was really interesting. And it was a twist that you weren't really expecting. Except like. Closer to the end, because he shot a painter in, like, the hotel room. And then he'd see painter when he got arrested. Wait. How does this make sense? How is he still alive? This makes no sense. So, yeah, there are some questions there. But, um... And it, I guess it makes sense that, oh, Lee Man was the painter. After all, I guess. But once again... I, I don't really feel they were establishing throughout the movie that something was a bit off, you know. In Fight Club, the girl and Tyler Darden were never in the same room together. Okay, so that's weird, you know. Uh, there's a part where, like, uh, Edward Norton's character apparently was driving the car, and then Tyler Darden's talking to them, and Meatloaf, I, I forgot his name, or... The guy, with, the guy with the with the breast, you know. I'll, I'll just say meatloaf. And his buddy's in the back, and they're looking at each other like, "What the?" And and you can maybe think, "Oh, man, he's just talking crazy." That's why, you know, that's why he's acting that way, or, or some, you know, why meatloaf was acting that way. But it turns out, no, he, yeah, the guy was just talking kind of crazy, you know. Some things kind of make sense, you know. You can kind of fill in the gaps here, um, but in this movie. It's very hard to fill in the gaps. I mean, it, it really is hard to fill in the gaps. You know, um, like, was he in a plane? Remember, there's that scene where um, Lee Man is in in a plane with Painter, and then he introduces the whole gang. You know, it's like, wait, did that not happen then? Like, I guess that didn't happen. You know, well. Then what are we as the audience watching? Just a scene that didn't happen at all? Like, that's the thing. In Fight Club, for example, and that's because it's the best example I can use, you're watching the scene, except, yeah, Tyler Durden doesn't actually exist. You know? And you can kind of explain that away. And here it's like, well... There's a scene in an airplane, and he's introducing everyone... So, the, that, were they even on an airplane? Like, I, I don't understand, <laughs> like, what's going on now, you know, because of the twist, you know. Uh, so, it actually made it, it, 
the word is convoluted. I, I do feel that the twist kind of actually made the movie a bit more convoluted than anything else. It was neat. It was more shocking. But it didn't really... I, I don't think it really fit the narrative well. I thought the movie by itself without this twist would have been just fine. Honestly, in the way that things turned out. I thought... um. I kind of thought everything was would have been just fine, even without it. I like Chai Young Fat's character, Aaron Kwok's character. Everyone just played it well, and I, I thought the movie just what is an interesting movie, you know. Um, without the twist, so um, like I said, it wasn't a bad movie. I'd still probably recommend it. You know, I'd give it a B. I, th- I thought it was a good movie. It was a cool action scene, you know, with Chai Young Fat. He's He's there going all akimbo, you know. And he's seriously in the middle of, like, gunfire. I mean, just no protection whatsoever. Shoots guys down, and he just gets grazed. Jumping, you know, he'll jump in the air, shoot his shotgun, you know, and, and whatnot. Just be total action hero, chow on fat. <laughs> um, you can see that in, like, if you ever watch, like, Hard Boiled or, like, The Killer or something like that. You can kind of see that as well. Um, so that was kind of cool. That, that scene was kind of like an homage to, like, Chow Yun Fat's, like, um, you know, some previous movies that he's had and whatnot. Um, so, I mean, I, it was still a cool movie. And I, I'm not going to lie. I thought the, I thought the twist was kind of neat. The problem is, it's when you think about it harder, and it's like, well, okay, like, that doesn't make sense, oh, that doesn't really make sense, you know, but I thought overall, it's still a good movie, it's just that, like, I don't actually think the twist brings it up, I don't necessarily, I would argue that it'd probably bring it down a little, it just wasn't really necessary, but otherwise, it was a fun movie. So that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel. Thank you for listening to this movie review. Next time, I'll have a manga review for Skip Beat Volumes 31 and 32, and an anime review for Shimaneta. Thank you, and until next time.